Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna be solving this interesting killer calculus question, question number 30 from 2025 Korean SAT Math exam that took place yesterday, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The full description of the question is in the beginning of the video. So we have two constants, A and B, and A is between one and two. Then your f of x is sine of ax plus b plus sine of x. And we have two conditions, f of 0 is equal to 0, and f of 2 pi is 2 pi a plus b. Then we have f prime of 0 is equal to f prime of t, such that the minimum positive value of such t value that satisfies this is now 4 pi. Okay, then we have alpha as the values of the x to make this f of x reach the local max. Capital letter of a is that of all such alpha values, where alpha is between 0 and 4 pi. And n is the number of the elements in A. And alpha 1 is the smallest value of such alphas. Okay, if n times alpha 1 minus AB is p over q times pi, then what's the value of p plus q, where p and q are co-primes? Okay, first of all, let's take a look at the first condition. f of 0 is equal to 0. So first, f of now 0. Plug it in 0 to the x, then we have sine of now b plus the sine 0, which is the same as just the sine of the b. This is equal to now 0. So that's why b has to be the angles that will make this sine 0. So that's why b should be like, for example, negative pi, 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on. Okay, so that's why your b is represented as, say, k times pi, where your k is an integer. Okay, then question also said this f of 2 pi is equal to 2 pi a plus b. So that's why f of now 2 pi. Okay, just to plug it in 2 pi to the x, then it has to be the sine of 2 pi a plus b. Okay, that is now equal to just a 2 pi a plus b. Okay, so if you take a look at this part, sine of 2 pi a plus b is equal to 2 pi a plus b. Same situation as sine of x is equal to x. So we can just talk about y is equal to sine of x, and then also y is equal to x, then talk about the possible intersection of these two different graphs, right? And there's only one value of the x where these two graphs intersect. x has to be equal to 0. We can easily check with the graph of it because if you put these two on the same graph, y is equal to x is this graph, and sine of x has to be looking just like this. So that's why the only intersection has to be when x is equal to 0. So that's why we can easily say this 2 pi a plus b should be equal to 0. So that your b is now equal to negative 2 pi a. And then we already talked about how your b is equal to k pi, right? Where k is an integer. So that's why we can say k pi a is equal to negative 2 pi a. Then we can cancel this pi out. So that's why your a has to be equal to negative k over 2. But then again, we have a range of the a, right? a has to be between 1 and 2. So since a is between 1 and 2, then at the same time, a is now negative k over 2. So that's why negative k over 2 should be between 1 and 2. OK, so from this, your k has to be between negative 4 and negative 2. But we already specified k has to be an integer. So the only possible integers of the k between negative 4 and negative 2 is negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. These are the only possible integer values of the k that is between negative 4 and negative 2. So case number 1, let's talk about when k is equal to negative 2. Okay, if k is equal to negative 2, then your a has to be equal to 1. So that's why your f of x is, okay, sine 
of now x minus 2 pi, then plus sine of x. Okay, so we're looking for the value of the t that is positive, but smallest possible value of the t that satisfy f prime of 0 is equal to f prime of t, has to be 4 pi. So that's why we are now looking for f prime of 0 is equal to f prime of t. So that's why let's talk about f prime of x. Okay, derivative. So it should be cosine of x minus 2 pi plus sine x chain rule that times 1 plus now cosine x okay then let's plug it in 0 to the x right so your f prime of 0 has to be cosine of negative 2 pi okay then that times 1 plus cosine of 0 okay this has to be 1 times 1 plus 1, that is 2. Okay, so we're looking for f prime of t is equal to 2 also. Then we need to ask whether the minimum positive value of the t that will make f prime of t is equal to 2 is 4 pi or not, right? So to making sure the period of the cosine and also the sine is 2 pi. So maybe we can plug it in like 0 or 2 pi to the k, but we do not have to plug it in 0 because t is the positive number. So that's why we can check 2 pi for the t. So let's get f prime of now then 2 pi. So if you plug it in 2 pi to the, to the x, right? Then it has to be now cosine of now 0. Okay, then that times now 1 plus cosine of 2 pi. Cosine of 0 is equal to 1, so this has to be now 1 times also 1 plus cosine of 2 pi is equal to 1, 2. This is equal to 2. Okay, these two values are equal. So that's why 2 pi makes sense for the t, and 2 pi is smaller than 4 pi. So that's why case number 1 is not the one we need to take a look at. Because we're looking for the positive minimum value of the t has to be 4 pi, right? So case number 1 is not the one we need to look for. And let's talk about case number 2. Let's do when your k is now negative 4. If k is equal to negative 4, then the value of the a has to be then 2. So that's why your f of x is now equal to sine of 2x minus 4 pi plus sine x. Let's get the derivative of f of x, right? So f prime of x has to be cosine of 2x minus 4 pi plus sine x. Okay, chain rule, that times now, parenthesis, 2 plus cosine x. Then we need to talk about f prime of 0, right? So f prime of 0, from this case, plug it in 0 to the x. So it looks like cosine of negative 4 pi. Okay, then that times 2 plus cosine of 0. So that is why this has to be just equal to, now then, 3. And then we are looking for the value of the t, such that 3 is f prime of the t. So t has to be just the x value here. Okay, so now we can try also this 2 pi, because we don't have to plug it in 0 for the t. So let's check f prime of 2 pi. Using how the period of the cosine is now 2 pi. So let's just make sure f prime of 2 pi has to be then cosine of 0. Okay, then that times 2 plus cosine of now 2 pi. Okay, so cosine of 2 pi is equal to 1 and cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So that's why 1 times 3 is equal to 3. Okay, they are equal. So 2 pi also makes sense for the t, such that f prime of t is equal to 3. And 2 pi is smaller than 4 pi, so that's why this is not the case we are looking for. So the last case has to be when k is equal to negative 3. When k is equal to negative 3, then your a has to be 3 over 2. So that's why, now in this case, uh, your f prime of x 
f prime of x has to be a cosine of 3 over 2x, and then minus 3 pi, and plus sine of x. Chain rule, that times 3 over 2 plus cosine x. And then let's plug it in 0 to the x, right? So f prime of 0. If you plug it in, that has to be cosine of negative 3 pi. Okay, then that times 3 over 2 plus, and then cosine of 0 is equal to 1, so 1. Okay, so that's why if you calculate this, cosine of negative 3 pi is negative 1, and negative 1 times 5 over 2, that is negative 5 over 2. So we're looking for f prime of t is equal to negative 5 over 2. And then the minimum positive value of the t that satisfy this has to be 4 pi, right? So just like before, since the period of the cosine is 2 pi, let's plug it in 2 pi first, right? Because we do not have to plug it in 0 for the t. Okay, so making sure if you're plugging in 2 pi to the t, so f prime of, say, 2 pi. Uh, if you calculate this, then it has to be now cosine of just 0, right? Cosine of, now then, 0. That times now 3 over 2 plus cosine of the 2 pi, which is equal to 1. But then again, since cosine of 0 is equal to 1, 1 times 5 over 2 is positive 5 over 2, not negative 5 over 2. So that's why this confirms that the positive minimum value of the t that satisfies this negative 5 over 2 is equal to f prime of t has to be now then 4 pi. If you plug it in 4 pi to this t, then f prime of 4 pi. Okay, that is now equal to then cosine of which is equal to negative 1, times 3 over 2 plus 1, which is 5 over 2. So multiply them, we'll get you negative 5 over 2, which is the value that we're looking for. So that's why we should be working on this case number 3. So we decided to work on case number 3. So your f prime of x was cosine of 3 over 2x minus now 3 pi plus sine of x. Okay, then that times 3 over 2 plus cosine x. We're now talking about the local max to talk about this value of the alpha, right? Specifically this alpha 1. So that's why this f prime of x should be equal to 0. So we have two so we have two terms, cosine of 3 over 2x minus 3 pi plus sine of x, and now we have 3 over 2 plus cosine of x. But then again, the second parenthesis, 3 over 2 plus cosine of x, this is always positive. Since the minimum value of the cosine is negative 1, right? So that's why in order for this f prime of x to be equal to 0, then this whole cosine of 3 over 2x minus 3 pi plus sine of x. This needs to be equal to 0. Okay, so the inside of this cosine, this is a little complicated. So let me call this g of x as this everything inside of your cosine. That is 3 over 2x minus 3 pi plus sine x. Okay, then at the same time, we already know the range of the alpha that is between 0 and 4 pi, right? So your alpha is now between 0 and 4 pi. Okay, so that's why if you plug it in, right? So g of 0 is simply negative 3 pi. And then g of now 4 pi. This has to be positive 3 pi. So that is why your g of x should be between negative 3 pi and 3 pi. Okay, so that's why let's now think about the graph of cosine of g of x, right?
Okay, the range is now then three pi, negative three pi to three pi. So the cosine graph is looking just like this. Okay, this has to be now then 3 pi, that is now 2 pi, and the pi. Okay, then also, that point has to be now negative 3 pi, and that is negative 2 pi, negative pi. Okay, so this has to be the graph of cosine of g of x, right? We want this cosine of g of x is equal to zero. So that's why possible points would be those. Okay, but then again, we're talking about the local max, right? So the sign change has to be from positive to negative. So that's why the only part is from positive to negative. From positive to negative for the sign change from positive to negative for the sign change. So that's why the total number of the alpha that we are looking for, that should be this point, and that point, and that point. That confirms that this n, the number of the elements in A, has been now 3, right? So your n is now equal to 3. Then at the same time, since the question is asking for n times alpha 1 minus a, b. So we need to talk about this alpha 1, right? Smallest value of such alphas. It should happen right at this point. And that point has to be negative 3 over 2 pi. Okay, so that's why we can say the alpha 1 for the alpha 1 value. We should be talking about how your 3 over 2x. The g of x was 3 over 2x. Uh, minus 3 pi, and then plus sine of x. This should be equal to negative 3 over 2 pi. Okay, so let's move around the terms, right? So sine of x, sine of x is now then equal to um, 3 over 2x minus 6 pi over 2 plus 3 over 2 pi. So that's why this has to be now then 3 over 2x uh, minus 3 over 2 pi. And if you pull this 3 over 2 out, make your parenthesis x minus now pi. We want this to be equal to 0. So that's why the x value that satisfies this has to be pi. So that's why alpha 1 is now equal to pi. Okay, so now we have everything, right? Alpha 1 is equal to pi, and then the value of the a was 3 over 2. And then the b was negative 3 pi, and then the n was now 3. So that's why let's talk about n alpha 1 minus a b. So n alpha 1 minus a b. This has to be equal to then 3 Okay, so 3 pi plus 9 over 2 pi. So that's why if you add them up, it should be now then 15 over 2 pi. Since 15 and 2 are co-primes, right? So that's why p plus q is now 2 plus 15, that is 17. So 17 was the answer for this question. Okay, it's a pretty interesting calculus question, so I'll be back with more videos, more questions like this sometime soon.